Import your map image into the project and place it into your map here composition. Scale it if necessary in order to fit the composition side. Now open your points here composition. Drag and drop the point composition. Move and place it on your desired point on the map. Now you have to rename the point with a descriptive name. For example, I'm going to call this first point home. Import as many points as you need and don't forget to rename them. When done, open the composition called Final Comp and create the first connection. The first thing you need to do is import the connection composition into the final composition. Locating it below the dash layer, double click to open it. In this example, I want to create a connection to link the point called Home to the point called Shop. So in the text field called Starting Point Layer Name, I'm going to type Home and in the End Point Layer Name, Shop. Pay attention because these text fields are case sensitive. It means that a lowercase character is different than an uppercase character. So for example, if I typed home with a capital H, it will not produce a right connection. If you don't remember the name that you gave to your points, you can select the controller layer and tick the show location names checkbox to see the full list of your points. In the same control panel, you can choose the connection color, the animation speed, the height, and the thickness. Now go back to the final composition and tick the Collapse Transformation checkbox. If you want to add another connection, simply select the connection composition from the project window and duplicate it. Place it in the final composition and repeat the previous task to configure the new connection. Always remember to tick the Collapse Transformation checkbox. To set the starting point of a connection, simply slide the connection layer in the timeline. When all connections have been placed, you can add animated pins on your points. So open the Pins Preview composition to see the available pins. Once you decide the pin style that you want to use, open the corresponding pin composition. In this example, the pin 1. In the Point Name text field, type the name of the point where you want to place the pin. Select the Controls layer and make your changes to customize the pin. Go back to the final composition, import the pin composition, and finally tick the Collapse Transformation checkbox. As you did for the connection, in order to place other pins, duplicate it from the project window as many times as you need. Before talking about the camera animation, let's consider the usage of the callouts. They work exactly as the pins, but with more options. Let's assume we want to place the callout 4 on the shot point. So open the callout 4 composition and type the point name. Replace the title and subtitle text and select the controls layer. Here you can customize the callout appearance, like colors, the box size, and more. Now go back to the final composition, import the callout composition, and turn the collapse transformation checkbox to on. Let's now try to customize an image callout. Open the image callout 1 and follow the quick guide. So import the image or video into the composition. Parent it to the image mat layer. Turn the image to 3D layer. 
Adjust the scale and the position in order to cover the gray shape. Move the image below the image mat. And finally set the track mat of the image layer to alpha mat. If you need to create further callouts with the same style, simply duplicate the callout as many times as you need and customize it. Now that all elements have been placed on the map, you can animate the camera. No need to create an, or manage keyframes. What you need to do is add markers on the camera position layer. Let me show you how it works. Let's assume you want to start aiming for the home point. Well, move the time indicator to the beginning. Select the camera position layer. Hold down the Alt key and press the asterisk key button. A marker window appears. Here in the comment field, you have to type the name of the point. Now if you want a 3 second camera animation from that point to the next, move the time indicator by 3 seconds. Create another marker and type the name of the corresponding point. To keep the camera still for a certain time, move the time indicator to that time. Then type the latest point name again. The great advantage of using markers is that you can easily retime your animation simply by moving them in the timeline. Select the map controls layer to see the layer effects. The first two controls are the camera distance and the camera elevation. As you can see, these controls cannot be animated so the camera will keep these values for the entire duration of the animation. But what if you want to animate these values? Open the corresponding marker, and after the name of the point, add a comma, and type a value between 30 and 200 to set the camera distance on this point. Then if you want, add another comma and type the elevation value between 10 and 80 degrees. Don't worry, you don't have to learn these value ranges because the project will inform you if you type a not allowed value. Just to summarize, the first marker value indicates the name of the place. The second value defines the camera distance and the third value, the camera elevation. As you can imagine, if you don't type the distance or elevation values or both, the camera will use the default values. Let's continue to examine the effects of the map controls layer. The next effect is the fold amount. Changing this value, you can adjust the paper folding. Tick the pins and the callout auto orientation checkboxes to rotate these elements in order to face the camera. It could be useful if you plan to create a view from above. The depth of field control enables or disables the depth of field of the camera. You can select a different floor texture or use a solid color. Use the corresponding color control to set the background color.
You can also use your custom texture. Open the custom floor composition and import your texture. At this point, select Custom from the Floor drop-down list. Since the connection lines are two-dimensional elements, if a connection occurs between two points on the same axis, as in this example, the line will be invisible. To overcome this problem, the only solution is to slightly change the orientation of the camera. To do this, select the Camera Position layer and change the orientation of the Z axis. 